All right, so at this time, without further ado, we're gonna bring out the current reigning, defending, SWE Live Wire Champion, Mr. 24 Carry, Trey Havoc. Come on out here, Trey. Oh. You got that gold on you, I see. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm set this right here. Is that good for us? Yeah. Get it nice and set it. Producer, is that good? All right. How you doing? All right, boss man. Good to have you on the show. Take Thank a seat. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. All right. So, you know, today we're going to touch on a lot of subjects, you know. We're going to get in depth. But before we get in depth, we're going to talk about your next title defense, Matt Navy at the Old Manson Show. Talked around, asked some guys. They said you two have a little bit of a history. You know, I've been out the loop for a while. Can you talk about that? So, when I first made my return, return because I have been here before, I wrestled Matt Maven. I had him. He cheated. Passed the path. I lost. Big deal. Big surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Matt Maven. Yeah. I came back for the Battle of the Burn Championship. Mm -hmm. um, Battle Royal. He was the last one in. I beat him. Fast forward to Battle Versary. It was supposed to be a one on one match with no nemesis, no title for title. He decided to insert himself and he lost again. So at the last show, I thought I'd uh, have a little fun and I played the wrong music at his, uh, in his entrance. What music was that? It was his old Fat Vic entrance. I thought he'd like it. Yeah. He does have a little bit of a multiple personality thing, right? You know? One second he's luscious, the next he's a lawyer. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a confidence comp thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But, so, going back to confidence, you feel like uh, come October 16th, you're bringing the bell home? Oh, of course. All right, all right, that's what I want to hear. You know, I'm all about confidence. You project what you want. What you put out there is what you're going to get. And we're going to touch on that later, all right? And this is the shocking truth. Just remember that. I'm jumping over no tables. I still got some guys out here. Right? <laughs> I thank you, sir. No, sir. My show. All right. So, first things first. What sparked your interest in wrestling? What brought you here? I was four years old. Um, I was flipping through channels, looking for uh, Nickelodeon, and I see a match with some guy in a cloak and a hat. And he's walking down all slow, and the lights are all blue, and I'm like, what is this? So I flipped away. But then I flipped back. I was like, now nah, I want to I see where this is going. End up watching The Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy. It's the first match I ever saw. Didn't know what time it was, because I'm four. Don't know what channel it was, because I'm four. So for the next seven days, I kept going through every single channel until I found it. And I found out the schedule and I just watched it every day since the day I was four. Yeah. I think that happens to a lot of us. You know, I can remember being uh, seven, eight years old. You know, in my area, up in the New York area, WWF was it, you know. But then on the weekends, I saw that at like two o'clock in the morning, they would play like a chopped up show at WCW. I would sit there and set my alarm clock Saturday night so that I could wake up and watch it, you know? And uh, I can relate to that, you know? It's just one of those things where if the passion is there, as soon as it comes, it hooks you. Now, was there anybody in your family that, or friend that once you got into wrestling, you found out they were a wrestling fan that kind of, you know, bonded with you over it? I had some, um, some friends from high school. I found out my parents used to watch it when they were younger, but they stopped. Um, yeah, other than that, it was really just me. I'd watch with my little sister, and uh, I watch with my grandma sometimes. Yeah. Well, you know I had my fact checkers go out and handle all this stuff before you get here. Oh, yeah, so, fact you, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you know, you're now rocking with the CEO of Marconi Talent Relations. Let's, let's, just remember that. All right, so the guys went out and they said, uh, this guy, him and his grandmother were close, and they bonded over this wrestling, and she was a big influence on him. So can you speak on that, or is it uh, too so much? So my grandma has always been a big proponent of whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. She always told me, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can do. And whatever you put your mind to, you will be the best at. That's kind of where the whole 24 character came from. But, yeah, um, whenever 
when my mom was in the hospital and my dad was at work, I'd go over to my grandma's house and watch it with her and my little sister. And I just told her, I was like, Grandma, like, I love this. I love you. I, uh, I connect with that. My grandmother, she was a depression era, you know, grew up at a time where pro wrestling was based off of basically like nationality, you know. And uh, for her, she watched the old WWF guys, you know, like Anthony the Rocker with the uh, Argentinian backbreaker. And I remember one of the greatest feelings was going to the video store. And then one day, because, you know, we had to rent them back then. Yeah. So you know, we would go to the video store, rent a tape, you know, and in there I saw a little black and white one. And it had all the guys on it, like Ricky Starr, Anthony the Rocker, that she would talk about. I brought that tape home, and we ended up having a whole bunch of late fees on it, you know, because we watched it over and over again, and she would reminisce. So, you know, I feel you on that, the family, family connection, you know. Um, all right. So, you know, now you got this interest. You're a young kid. When do you start really wrestling in any sense of the word? Well, uh, you know, I know you do have an amateur background. When did that start? <laughs> so funny enough about that, um, I was in middle school. I went to Trask Middle School in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, I saw that they had a, a wrestling, um, a wrestling team. So I go, I'm like, yeah, you know, I get to go ahead and start early. You know, I get to do what they do on TV. Yeah, not so much, right? <laughs> no. I walk in, there's mats, there's people, you know, rolling around and everything. I'm like, where's where's the wrestling ring? Yeah. And they're they're showing us the moves. I'm like, where's the FUs? Where's the where's the tombstones? They're like, that's not that's not this. Like, that's not this kid. I was like, oh, all right. But I stayed with it. I loved it, and it was my it was like my second passion. You know, uh. So, how long did it take you to settle in and say, because, you know, the world of pro wrestling, amateur wrestling, they, they merge, you know, but they're also very different things at certain points. Um, when did you decide that, okay, you know, even though this isn't what I want, I'm going to be able to pursue this amateur thing, and hopefully, did, now, did you go into it with the mindset that this will help still prep me, or were you just like, hey, this is a different thing, and did you drop the pro wrestling thing once you realized that? You know, amateur wrestling, Olympic wrestling wasn't what you thought. So, so when I went in, like I said, I fell in love with it. And I know Kurt Angle, you know, he was an amateur wrestler, Olympic wrestler, and went on to be a phenomenal professional wrestler. So, yes, you know, along the lines, I was like, this will help me in the long run. I can take this and I can use this when I become a professional wrestler. But that was always going to be the goal. That was always going to be the so you never kept your eyes off the prize. It was all about using this tool to take it to that further goal of professional wrestling. Whatever I use here, I will be able to use in professional wrestling. Good mindset. All right, so, you know, how long did you wrestle for? Did you wrestle all through middle school and high school? I wrestled, yes, I wrestled through middle school. I wrestled sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I did not wrestle my junior year of high school because my mom was in the hospital all and all. But then I came back and I wrestled my senior year. Any, any uh, state championships, national championships? I won a NCAA states, or NCHAA states in North Carolina. I won um, a few tournaments. I busted my knee in regionals, so I didn't go to states my senior year. Now, I heard that you gave up a scholarship to pursue professional wrestling. Speak on that. So I had a scholarship for Coastal um, Carolina University. They wanted me in there for full ride, but I wanted to pursue wrestling. This is what I wanted to do. And I knew if I was there, I wasn't going to be able to do this. So I decided not to do that and to pursue my dream. How did the family take that? How did grandma take that? Grandma, grandma always, like I said, my grandma always saw a good thing. So when I told her, she was like, are you sure you don't want to be a doctor? You don't want to be a lawyer? You don't want to be a teacher? I was like, I want to wrestle. And then 
she looked at me, she smiled, she said, "Here we go, Russ." That's that's true love because you know, not many people will, will tell you that. That that shows the level of faith that she had in, in you and the level of faith you had in yourself to see this out. You know, you're well on your way. You know, uh, keep pushing hard. I'm sure that you know you'll you'll get you'll get there. You know, right now you're holding this title. It's a uh, it's a pathway to the heavyweight championship and some bigger things. You know, so. Uh, I, I think you're on the way, you know, time will tell ultimately, you know, if you're going to keep that. All right, so, now you've given up the scholarship, right? How do you find out where to train? Because for, for some people, you know, for me, it was very hard. They were very, even in the New York area at the time, I think there was like Johnny Rod's school, you know, and uh, depending on who you talk to, it was either really great or it was a waste of money, to be frank, you know? I mean, uh, up in New York, it was the Johnny Rod School. That's where most of the guys went, or at least cut their teeth and got their first training. How do you go about finding a trainer? How do you go about finding, you know, what scenario is right for you? Because there's a lot of trainers, but there's very few people who are gonna bring you to the top. So actually, it, everything kind of fell in my lap. I don't wanna say it definitely fell in my lap, but it was, Kind of fortuitous how it happened. So I worked at Food Lion, and I was a cashier. So one day a man comes through my, he comes through my line, and he's got a wrestling shirt. I was like, oh, I like your shirt. You know, it's really cool. He's like, oh, thanks. I was like, um, you know, where is it from? Because I was on the wrestling. And I was like, where is it from? So he's like, oh, it's a, um, it's a place I wrestle. I was like, oh, you wrestle? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, I've always wanted to wrestle. He's like, well, you know, I can get you in touch with some of my people. You know, you can come down and you know, come check us out. So when, you know, they taught me how to bump, you know, taught me how to run the ropes, just that small stuff. And there was a guy there, uh, James the Beast Beasley. And he was watching me. He pulls me to the side. He's like, hey, he's like, you've got, you've got some things. He's like, I know it's really early, but I can see some stuff in you. Do you want to come train me? So I went, I trained with him, he taught me so much stuff. He taught me psychology, he taught me like ring awareness, he taught me different holds, like he taught me so much and that 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 helped me, you know, a lot going forward in my career. Yeah. Yeah. And uh what area was this? So where did you get started out? Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, where I'm from. Wilmington, North Carolina, so not too far away, not too far away. All right, so let's go back to talk about your trainer. You know, since that time, he has passed away, correct? Um, what effect did that have on you? Oh, it hurt. Um, it hurt a lot. I was, I was actually at work when I found out. I got a phone call from one of the guys I used to run with, and he's like, hey, he's like, he's passed. Oh, okay. That sucks. I'm at the phone. Did, did, did. Fuck. Tears came. I packed up all my stuff. So at this point, you know, when you found out he passed, were you two still in contact with, like, you released from your training? Were you already on the road? Or were you still under his thumb, you know, dealing with him every day? I was always, like, from day one, he always told me, he's like, hey, he's like, I can teach you everything here, but you're still going to have to be on the road. That's where you're going to learn a bunch of yourself. So I was always on the road while I was training. Um, but, yeah, he, I still religiously have to go over to his house. We go around, work on some stuff. So, yeah, I was still, we were still in good contact. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, that, uh, you know, the, the recurring thing I see so far in this interview is you do have that passion. You have that drive to push forward, you know. Um, you made the decision to drop the scholarship, pursue it. You know, at a young age, your grandmother saw it. And she said, go for it. And your trainer saw it. He said, go for it. And it's a credit to you, you know, the passion that you must exude when you're in that ring, you know. So, so far it's going great. But right now we're gonna take a pause to uh, run some commercials and pay some bills. And when we get back, 
will be back in depth. If you're in need for fast mail services for a defendant's quick release from jail, then you can turn to Grimes Mail Bonding and Notary Services. We are your trusted mail bondsman. Making mail is made simple thanks to our process. We keep things direct and fast. The first step and the step you need to take now is call us, Newber 252-671-2297, Jacksonville 910-577-3733. Grimes, mail bonding, and notary service. Get your Body Slam t shirt today by visiting www.bodyslamtees.com, where you can also get other great wrestling merchandise as well as other things, as it is part of the Deals Daily Now network. But show your support for professional wrestling, especially the great independent professional wrestling here on the Mean Mark Ash Network, by visiting www.bodyslamtees.com and get your shirt today. All right, and we're back on the shock and truth with my guest, Mr. 24 Carat, Trey Havoc, the SWE Livewire Champion. So we just got done talking about the trainer, how you got here, your initial journey, all right? I want to know about the pro debut. What went good, what went bad, how were you feeling, and where was it? So uh, my debut match was January 27, 2017. I was in a triple threat elimination tag match with the Beasts, which James Beast, my, uh, my trainer, his son, uh, Another team, <laughs> and me and yeah, I can't remember. But uh, me and um, another guy, and first one, I eliminated um, my trainer with the old uh, Eddie Guerrero spot mm -hmm. chair. We would have him. Um, you got the DQ win. Yep, got the DQ win. He left, beat me up pretty bad for it. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Came up this close in my debut match to winning the tag team championships, but my partner ended up losing. So he took he got the pen, so we lost. But you know, it was a great experience being there with my trainer for my first match. And looking at it now, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, everybody's got stuff to talk. Yeah, you but know, you know, you know, if if. if if you stop learning or think you don't have anything else to learn, you've lost. You know? So every time you go out, every time you interact with these fans, every time you cut a promo, it should be a building process for you. you know? It's never it never stops. You know? Don't stay sad. You know? Alright, so there's your pro debut. Alright. What were some of the territories, what were some of the promotions, places that you uh, started building, you know, off of that initial experience? Uh, did you win any titles along the way? Let's hear about that. So I started in uh, Dirty South Championship Wrestling in Supply. Then there was another company out there, um, Saturday Night Mayhem Championship Wrestling. That's yeah. where I won my first title. It was the 24-7 championship. Where Rocco Marconi discovered the maniac Jack Tatum, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, had to throw that in there. Well, take take uh, my spot, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then I, yeah, so I went there. I won the 24-7 championship there. Um, I also worked a company called uh, Four Corners Championship Wrestling. That's when I won. That's where I won my first major championship, which I still have. So I'm going on two years with that title. You hear that, folks? Who's going to come try to take it? Who's going to come try to take it? It's mine. It's mine at this point. There you go. <laughs> the... Um, I've been to a few states, been to North Carolina, obviously South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, um, won championships in Georgia. Um, got to go for the tag championships and New Era Wrestling in Alabama next month. So just trying to get as many titles as I can, show the world who I am. Putting those miles on. My, my car is not happening. <laughs> Frequent oil changes. Right? Oh, yes. All right. So, you're in all these places. What brings you to Shockwave? The talent, the fan base. 
I've always had friends in this company, but the stars have never actually aligned for me to come here. I come in every now and then, you know, lose because I wasn't I wasn't ready. Yeah. But I've always wanted to come here. So when the moment finally came and I finally was ready, you know, I showed up. I won the battle royal. I won this large trophy. And I beat Rock. And I'm gonna have a lot more check. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. Cause as you may know, the last client of Marconi Talent Relations was Big Richie. Big Rock Richards. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. The last client, you know. Um, I guess the night he lost it, I wasn't there, you know. Might be a coincidence, might not be a coincidence. <laughs> but he's a hell of a talent, you know. Big dude on a very dominant run. I mean, he was he was knocking everybody down. Omega D, you know, that was a tough fight that night. Names, you know. Guys who are putting the miles on the road. They have uh, shown that they are championship caliber material. Talk about that night and the match and what was going through your mind. So, winning the Battle of the Burn Battle Royal gave me the opportunity to challenge any um, any champion, you know, whenever I wanted. Pause right there. Why choose Rock? <sighs> Rock, I felt at the time, honestly need to be taken down a peg. He does got a swagger to him. He does got a swagger. That's why I like him. And that was to his detriment because he underestimated me. And that's a big statement. When you underestimate me, I'm going to have to prove to you why I am, where I am, and who I am. So, to make a statement, I took his time. But I mean, you know, that that's a good summary. But let's go back to the original question now. What, what were you thinking that night? You know, I know I segue to that. What were you thinking that night? And ultimately, what strategy? Talk about more. What happened in that match where you were like, all right, this guy's not taking me serious enough? And what opportunity presented itself where you were like, all right, this is it. One, two, three. So <clears throat> we had a match at the beginning of the show where he decided to jump me as I was making my entrance. That's fine. Do what you have to do. I end up, I end up beating him. Hit him with my gold rush. Hit him one, two, three. And that was at the first. I was at that moment. I was like, "This is mine. Yeah, this is mine." Yeah. So another opportunity presented itself at the end of the show. Brock. Decided to stick his, his nose in a place he didn't belong. It was me and DA Assassin. He decided to run down, attack me. I made a statement. Hit him with another gold rush, and this time I did take the time. So, that initial uh, interaction at the beginning of the show, that, that's when you were like, you know what? I'm there. You know, I, I can take this title from this guy. Because, you know, up until that point, like I said, dominant. Dominant, you know? But that goes back to, you know, the easy part is getting there. Sustainability is where it's at, you know. It's easy to, the easy part is working up to it, you know. The expectation's not there. You come and you take the title, now it's like, oh man, this, this is the guy, right? Wow, what an amazing thing. Then the pressure's on. How long can you maintain that pressure? How long can you be the man, you know? And we're going to get into, we're going to get into that. Because right now, we're going to get into Rocco's two cents, which is worth more than $100 in your pocket if you didn't know it. That's right. You like that one? All right. So, your last title defense at the show. I believe um, Robin Golfer, formerly RTG. Yes, sir. All right. He's going by Robin Golfer now. All right. So, things I noticed, all right, that we're going to go over. You're a big guy who can move. I like it. You know? Um, there's nothing more imposing than a guy who can move. Vader, Bam Bam, you know, favorites growing up because they had that viciousness and the strength of a big man, but they were light on their feet. And I see that in you, I see changing, you know. Um, 
One of the other things I liked early on in the match, you were utilizing that amateur background. You had that single leg takedown that was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he couldn't keep up with you, to be, be, to be frank. But you were your own worst enemy. Because just like we were talking about being on that peg, you know, you start to get in your own head. You're playing to the crowd. You start worrying about what the crowd's thinking. You want them to like you or you want that interaction when it's time to be serious. And then this smaller guy who's quick, now he's taking you down. He's throwing you in a headlock. Um, did you recognize that during the match? Is that something that you're gonna be working on going forward? Uh, because I gotta tell you, up until that point, you were fine. You started playing to that crowd, and now you're getting taken down by a guy who's probably at least 50 pounds lighter than you. Thoughts? So, <clears throat> I've, I've defended this championship quite a few times mm -hmm. since I won it. Once I beat Rock, I implemented the 24 karat open challenge. So basically anybody in the back can come and make a challenge for the time. So I've, I've won a lot of those, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I guess with all that... Complacency? A little bit of complacency, a little bit of cocky. And I haven't had a challenge like Robin Dolphin, someone as experienced and as traveled as Robin Dolphin since Rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm taking for granted. A smaller guy, you know, I'll have a little bit of fun. And watching the tape back, I saw my issues. I lost a little bit of the instinct focus that I have to get the job done. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting here and I'm having fun with them, and I'm taking it's all it's all good work, like to have fun. But you gotta keep your eye on the prize, and not doing that almost cost me my time. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely something that's going to be addressed. Well. That, that complacency and focus, you know, and that's what I'm telling you, the sustainability. All right. There's one, there's one part of this match that um, we got to talk about. Okay. You go for the pin attempt. You got this guy's leg hooked. Right. The same leg you got hooked, he's able to get on that bottom rope to break the count. Now, I'm going to tell you, if I'm your manager, mm -hmm. win or loss, when we get back to that locker room, we're having a private conversation. You know, um, what do you think you're gonna do different going forward to avoid that? And, you know, we talked about watching the tape. It goes back to being an athlete, high school, middle school, college. What are you gonna do to stop this? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, with all the potential and passion you have, a guy putting their foot on that bottom rope, when you got it hooked, especially in amateur background, that's going to cost you. So earlier on in the match, you started, you know, really targeting my arm because he does the cobra clutch. Yeah, yeah. He got it on so, you at least once, right? Mm -hmm. So he targets your arm, and that's the arm that I took you with. So, yeah, my arm was a little weak. He kicked out. He got on the ropes. I, I know better, honestly. I know better. That ring was right? Yes. Bring and that, that will happen. You see, because you know I'm going to be watching. And you know they're going to be watching. You know what I'm saying? Um, back it up. You know what I'm saying? If you say you're going to do it, back it up. And I, I can see a, a long title now. You know, maybe you need some representation. But I'm out of the business for right now. For right now. But feel free to take a card at the end of this interview. Uh, lastly, I like the finish. The gold rush. Um, like I said, big man who can move. The intensity in which you came out and hit him with that spear was amazing. You know, small guy, it looked like you broke him in half. What made you choose to go rush it as your finisher? And um, is it something that you can see doing a long time or are you working on other things? I, excuse me. I'm, I'm a guy that always likes to be versatile. I can do a lot of stuff. And that's also a credit to me of being light on my feet, being able to move. Because when I started, I was 170 pounds. I was high flying. I was doing moon salts. I was doing uh, swan tons. I was doing springboards, and all that stuff I can still do, even though I am 
you know, about 50 pounds heavier. That was good. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm always trying to be versatile. I'm always trying to be adaptable. So there's a bunch of stuff in my arsenal that you just have not seen. The gold rush I use as an homage to some of the people that influence me. So you got Bobby Lashley, you've got you know, Roman Reigns. I'm watching him now. Uh, Goldberg, you know, all these people that are using the spear. And it just seems like a perfect fit for me. I like it. You know, I'm not knocking it, you know. But I, I do know, you know, that on the grand scheme of things, your arsenal is a lot bigger than that. But I mean, if it ain't broke, like I always say, don't fix it. You know, very fast, very fast and impactful. All right, folks, at this time, I'm going to allow you to plug anything you got going on social media wise, anything out there that you want the fans to know. And then uh, we're going to go wrap it up. So hit them with you. My name is Mr. 24 Karat Trey Havoc. I am your live wire champion. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. 24K Trey or on Instagram at 24K Trey. I'm also on Facebook as Trey Havoc and I do have a YouTube. It is Trey Havoc. <laughs> but I will be here October 16th to beat Matt Maven. That's all you gotta know. All right, folks. And this is the shocking truth. Remember, you can only find us on the Mean Mark Ash Pro Wrestling Network exclusively on your Roku devices. Forget about it! That's cute. I like that. If you're in need for fast mail services for a defendant's quick release from jail, then you can turn to Grimes Mail Bonding and Notary Services. We are your trusted mail bondsman. Making mail is made simple thanks to our process. We keep things direct and fast. The first step and the step you need to take now is call us, Newburn 252-671-2297, Jacksonville 910-577-3733, Grimes Mail Bonding and Notary Service. Get your Body Slam t-shirt today by visiting www.bodyslamtees.com where you can also get other great wrestling merchandise as well as other things as it is part of the Deals Daily Now network. But show your support for professional wrestling, especially the great independent professional wrestling here on the Mean Mark Ash Network by visiting www.bodyslamtees.com and get your shirt today. One. We are now live at the Craven County JC Fairgrounds for the shocking truth. You're rocking with the man of the hour, the man with the power, the best host in professional wrestling today, and the CEO of Marcone Talent Relations, Rocco Marcone. And if you ain't ever seen me, it's because I'm up in the places you ain't invited to be. <laughs> get your money right. Before we get into today's show, we're going to talk about October 16th. Right here at the Shockwave Arena, we're going to be holding Ode to Manti, okay? At this show, we're going to have a special battle royal where the winner is going to get a shot at the SWE Heavyweight Championship, okay? All proceeds are going to go to the family of Daryl Carl Hall, our fallen brother. Come out, support us, support him and his family. And let's have a beautiful night. Now, today, we're going to be interviewing Mr. 24 Carat, Trey Hat, the current reigning and defending SWE Live Wire Champion. But before we do that, we're going to get in some commercials. We got to pay those bills. See you when you get back. <laughs> 